Hello, hello, guys. My name is Anna. I'm from Georgia. Uh, I'm a woman feeding master and professional chess coach. Uh, today, we will talk about the Petrov defense. I will remind you guys, this is the course for the beginner players, like uh, uh, the players who just like uh, wants to learn some directions. It's not covers like a uh, deep variations and um, it's not covers like uh, every single variation, let's say. Uh, but I, I hope it will be useful. And um, uh, let's get started. So um, a little bit about the Petrov's defense. Uh, first, Petrov's defense is e4, e5, knight f3. When we're attacking the e5 pawn. Well, as we know, the knight c6 is the most common move. And uh, that's the main move. Uh, but... Um, here, technically, uh, black have uh, two other moves too. One is the Philidor's defense, which is like um, to protect the central e5 pawn. Uh, the Philidor defense is really old and interesting opening. Um, it's nowadays it's less um, popular than others because it's uh, like a little bit passive, let's say. Um, it's a little bit passive. It blocks the bishop, and um, that's why like knight c6 is the more. Uh, popular right now but d6 is also really interesting and still a lot of people plays it and here we have another move which is the knight f6 and this is the petrov's defense well idea of that move is if you attack my pawn okay i will also attack your pawn and uh, black tries to counter attack um e4 pawn so here um technically the three white have the three moves but the knight e5 is the best to take the pawn uh, but there, they can also play knight c3 and just continue to develop pieces in castle and play something like uh, peaceful moves and developing moves. And also here is the d4 move, uh, which is like, a, it's actually interesting. Um, if black takes, there is the e5 move and um, uh, the position gets like um, really interesting if opponent um, uh, takes on e4. Then uh, again, white have a couple of options uh, like knight e5 or bishop d3. Well, it will like uh, end up with the position what's technically we also mostly get from the main line of the Petrov defense. So uh, d4 is also an interesting move. Um, and yeah, against d4, probably knight e4 is better than ed, but both are possible and both are okay. But let's talk about the knight e5, which is like, a, this is like a most common move, and it's a good move. Opponent offers you, go take my pawn, why not? In this position, black have the three main moves. One is the d6 to get rid of the knight, and this is the main move, and we will discuss it uh, at the end. Um, another option is to take the central pawn, which is like a... Uh, technically not that good like other moves and I will explain why this is not that good and at the beginner level almost everyone plays this so it will be I think good to be ready um, against this move and to know how to play against it here is also the Stanford Gambit which is like um, again it's interesting and idea of that is to, to kind of like get the two good open bishops and like uh, create some attack on the um, king side with everything what they have. Um, Stanford Gambit is like um, it's better technically in the it's technically the better in the um, uh, oh my god what I was talking about <laughs> uh, it's better in the blitz and the bullet game so Stanford Gambit we will see most in the blitz or bullet games not in the um, classical games but some people also play it in the classical and it's interesting but the reason why it's more popular with the lower time control is that um, technically if white knows how to play against it uh, Stanford Gambit is um, not that good, let's say. Let's say not. It's still good. It's interesting. We can play, but it's not the best. Let's say not the best uh, if our uh, white knows how to play against it. And mostly when you play classical tournaments, you have more time to think. You're more prepared before you go and play, right? So technically, mostly you know 
have to answer it. But in the Blitz and Bullet game, one small misplay and you can lose the game as a white, I don't know, 20 moves, 30 moves. So it's like a uh, really sharp and interesting for black. Okay, so um, what about the 94? First, I will show you guys the famous trap uh, in the Petros defense when for white now the best move is the queen e2 to threaten the knight and also to x-ray upon his king right and uh, this knight is under attack and um the small problem now for black is if they will retreat somewhere with the knight for example they go knight f6 or they go knight c5 or they go knight d6 white will do discover check and wins the queen there's no way to save the queen anymore. Like, if you do queen e7, you're gonna take it. If you do bishop e7, we still take it. And black can't capture our knight because it's like a check right now. So white will win the queen. This is first. The second in this position, let me show you one more time from the beginning. So it will be easier to understand what we are calculating. So knight f3, knight f6, Petro's defense, this and queen e2. Uh, after queen e2, well, like I said, if knight retreats, there is the discover check and black will lose the queen. Oops, sorry, a lot of errors. Um, what about the other moves? Uh, for example, if black will try to protect the knight with the d5 pawn, then white plays d3 to get rid of it. And in this line, uh, white ends up with the extra pawn uh, because like a... Uh, Again, you can't retreat. It's discover check and white will win the knight. Sorry, the queen. And uh, white is also attacking the knight. But here's the thing. We take on e4. And after black takes, we take on d5. And because of the pin, black can take it back. And we will end up with the extra pawn. So we will get the end game position with extra pawn. Which is not bad. <laughs> not bad. Um, so that's why d5 is also not the best option against queen e2 the technically um uh there's also the d6 move and after d6 white have also um interesting move which is the they have actually two moves and it's about to decide what we prefer to get one is to sacrifice the knight to uh force opponent to take with the king so they can't castle anymore and we grab this knight back so as you see white will end up with the extra pawn this way which is better, of course, because Black King is kind of vulnerable and it's like a little bit weak and uh, also can't castle anymore. Second option to get the pawn here is we just take on e4 and when Black takes, we just take there to its check and we end up with the extra pawn. This is also a good option and um, this is also good. The best move in this position for Black is the Queen e7. Uh, so... In all other lines, as we already analyzed, black will lose either pawn, knight, or queen. Depends what they will play. Against the queen e7, uh, white takes on the e4, and black attacks, and black's idea is, okay, I give you the knight, but now I have a pin, and I will get this knight back, right? So um, they want to get the knight back. And also, this is also not a... Uh, it's not solves the problem because it's still pinned now on the king. So this knight will die. We can't save it. But white have a good move here. Interesting move, which is d4. And idea of this move is, okay, I'm going to just protect it. And I will like uh, have the extra pawn. So um, this is the best option for black. And this is best option for white too this, in some positions white can get this pawn back but actually having the extra pawn at this position it's good because first of all it's extra even if we will lose it black will need to some effort to take it right black will need a couple of moves to attack the pawn and focus on that pawn and then we are developing our pieces we will castle and even if we will lose that pawn it's not a problem because we won the time we already developed our pieces we castled and it's of course uh, will be useful for us um so this is how the knight e4 move looks like and that's why the knight e4 move is not good because as i already showed you guys mostly black will lose at least pawn in those positions 
and um, that's why the d6 is the best move and now i will tell you guys what is the idea behind the d6 so we can't take knight e4 because of queen e2 and we get in the trouble right idea of d6 is okay i will get rid of the knight and then i will take on e4 so now if white takes queen e2 it's not a problem anymore because black can also protect it and it's not a problem i i know what you th think guys right now this queen is the weirdly place it blocks the queen black same but both are in the same situation, right? Like, they both block their queens weirdly. So it's okay for um, both of them right now. Um, so that's why queen e2 not works anymore. Remind you, in the previous position, when we had knight here, after attacking, black can't protect the knight, right? But after d6, they're attacking the knight. And when they take after queen e2, they already have queen e7. So now queen e2 not works anymore. And that's why in this position, white just plays d4. And they try to like get the center and develop the pieces, castle. Black plays d5, which is obviously a good move to, keep, to protect the knight and to keep it in the center. And it's, of course, good move. Bishop d3, attacking, developing. And um, uh, then white castles. Black also castles. Like a... Uh, We'll get an interesting position. For example, bishop d6, um, both castles, castle, castle. White have also option to play c4 to kind of like a, attack this pawn because it protects the knight, right? And to like a, get rid of the pawn. And black will mostly protect it with the pawn to keep this pawn chain together. So this is what the position will look like, like rookie one, rookie eight. There's also the situations with the isolated pawns on the d file and others. Well. As I said, I will just show you, like, guys, some early moves and how the opening works and what kind of moves we have in those positions. Uh, but after a couple of, like, uh, opening videos, we will also do some middle game play to tell you what is the main middle game plus. For example, okay, I placed this couple of moves and then what's next? Like, openings and middle games, they're really connected and we should uh, kind of, like, a uh, not learn them separately like after your opening 10 moves for example you should know how to continue your middle game too to not get confused and to not ask yourself okay what to do now what is the next right so at least not a full middle game but we should cover early middle game and early middle game is exactly connected with opening because after opening you get the early middle game which is uh mostly what you get after your openings right uh, so uh it's interesting let's also do some games and let's analyze them and let's analyze all those openings deeper way and um, let's do it together <laughs> um i hope you enjoyed with it guys uh and uh don't forget to like the video if you would like of course and to subscribe and see you next time bye bye